ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, and beautiful people across the whole world. In particular, you, you hot, sexy minx. It's Thursday, May 22nd, 2014, and this is Day 9 Daily number 700 and... God, I'm really bad at remembering the numbers of these shows. 708, where we learn to be a better gamer? Today's episode, we're going to take a look at Parting's GSL run. We're going to be able to watch all four games, because Parting took a dump on everybody. None of the games were anything but one-sided, with one single exception. And that was still pretty ugly. It's just going to be great. It's going to be gorgeous. It's going to be delightful, lovely. And we're going to learn a little bit about the idea of how to succeed strongly in the metagame. Another exciting news, I just did an immortal impersonation, thanks to C. Trey. Oh, who just subbed, welcome to the day nights, although... Being someone who requests the Immortal Dance, of course, you were regardless of subitude. But the important thing, the salient aspect of the Immortal impersonation, which is where I... You squat down and you get your arms like that. Upon doing it for about 10 seconds, my thighs burned so much. I was on a diet for a while, and that was cool. I lost, like, about close to 20 pounds. It was really cool. But the problem is, I was doing it by cutting carbs heavily and just reducing food intake, and like my brain stopped working. I was like out of focus and just like stressed, and I couldn't do stuff well. And you apparently need a lot of resting time to do this because your brain needs carbs to like function properly. And I was just. <sighs> it was gruesome. And so I've decided that I need to become a very typical standard healthy person and to exercise because every single time I've been exercising regularly, I just feel amazing. I feel just amazing. So as we can see, the Bernie thighs. Good evidence. Good evidence. That we gotta do it. We really gotta exercise. Oh god, look at this. Euphoric is how we feel. Tomorrow I'm going to play Transistor. Game looks awesome. Bastion was awesome. We're going to do it. Let's talk a little bit about metagame, shall we? Metagame is, of course, the information. Um, no, I don't want to put it like that. In, in a sort of simple sense, metagame is what people are generally doing. So, if, for instance, every single Protoss player is going Nexus and then Forge against Zerg, you can pretty comfortably go for three hatch before pool. Or you can pretty comfortably go for a six pool and guarantee a significant amount of damage to that nexus. Maybe even cancel it. So the metagame is something that I'm always very eager to talk about as being bad to think through too thoroughly. Even those players who are going three hatch before pool are smart enough to know that there are still things that they can die to, like proxy two gates. Like someone who goes one gate in base and twists it into a four gate on one base. And you've heard me talk in so many shows about, even though I know people are doing a lot of first Nexus plays as the uh, Protoss player, doesn't mean that Zerg can just go willy-nilly crazy, honky-dory, hoopsie-doopsie. You still have to exercise some caution. It's just something that can inform your decision-making process. What we're going to see from parting, I think, is one of the most gorgeous, um, strong utiliz utilizations of the metagame to his advantage. Because what tends to happen is there's a wedge of behavior that everyone is living inside of. It tends to be something like, all right, if you're Protoss against Terran, you have to go one gate expand, straight into a robo, and then go Colossus. That's what you do. And maybe you build two stalkers and get a little aggressive. Maybe you get early gas and no stalkers, and you're a little bit more early on the forge. But more or less, it's this wedge. And I want to emphasize how tiny many players think about the wedge. Um, when you hop up a little bit, people think of a slightly wider wedge where you'll see players say things like, hmm, uh, is there a way that I can maybe 
see if there's a chance I can apply pressure with Fast Immortals. No? No? Okay, right on back to the normal play. Or maybe there's players who will say, you know what? I think I can get away with two forges instead of one if I do this little scout. But again, it's all based upon the tiniest of tiny wedges. What we'll see out of parting is he does quite a wide, <laughs> quite a big splaying open of things. We'll see this throughout where you're going to see the same basic ideas that people are using, but he's really taking it to kind of an extreme way to where you might almost say it looks like something new. But fortunately, it's not completely 100% brand spanking new. It's something that you'll be familiar with if you are familiar with the StarCraft meta. <laughs> Parting is up here in the top left-hand corner. It's on Frost. Biel is down in the bottom right. This is his very first game in the GSL. Parting's about to spread him wide. And by that I mean his metagame or his smile. And those are the only two options, you dirty internet user. So what's traditional for a Zerg player on this map is to go for a hatch first. There's some very cute things you can do where you can wall off and cannon rush here. Some cannon rushes behind the minerals are also a touch potent. So what we're seeing Parting do is the beginnings of a very econ focused strategy. Yeah, there could be a gateway first play. That's certainly part of the meta, but I'll tell you right now, Parting is in fact going for a very swift expansion. And I'm going to emphasize this a lot throughout. Just because in the metagame people tend to do something doesn't mean that you can disregard everything else. Parting is going to do two things that are very sexy. The first thing is he's going to exploit the metagame really, really, really hard with this opening build order. And he's still going to account for a lot of the bullshit that will annoy a lesser player. And the bullshit that Parting accounts for, the ability to withstand said bullshit, is the difference between a Code S champion and a player who says, this feels coin flippy. And what's wonderful about this is that I actually get to identify clear points in time where a bad player will conclude that there's a coin flip going on. There's not nearly as many coin flippinesses. Um, in this game as one might think. Absolutely you can construct an example that will feel like a coin flip. But coin flippiness is not a fact, it is a mindset that you can work against. So here we go. 15 Nexus. What is your immediate thought? Parting, you dummy, what happens if you lose to a very fast spawning pool? Very simple question. First and foremost, you see parting dart down there? Notice, most Zerg players will send the Overlord vertically, which means that this probe will get the opportunity to spot this Overlord. I would actually go so far as to say almost every good Zerg player will do this because it allows the Zerg player to scout the expansion quickly. So parting is now, upon that move, almost certainly scouting the top right or the bottom right. Very nice. What is a common player going to be saying? Oh, well, if you want to go for a gateway first play, you're very vulnerable to that fast pool. Notice a couple things that Parting did. First of all, this pylon is in the main. If, for instance, Parting went pylon gateway and a six pool arrived, the six pool would kill a nexus, a pylon, and force a gateway cancel. Well, likely force a nexus cancel, but more or less shut down three buildings. Here, not only is it in the main, but look at this placement. The gateway, very, very easy to defend. There's not even enough surface area for the links to really apply pressure. And the gateway defends the more vulnerable pylon. And this is a 16 gateway. This was 15 nexus. Don't chrono boost. Save the chrono boost and then build the gateway. A lot of very tiny things, a lot of critical things. 
a pylon goes down. Why is this an important pylon placement? Because zerglings that would want to circle around suddenly can't. There are two attack angles for zerglings. It's here and here. Very easy micro avenues. Why did the probe go here first? Because it's going to see this overlord, sees it, and immediately beelines down to the bottom side. So parting at this point in time, starting to chrono boost out the probers. He hasn't gotten any sort of adequate scouting out yet. Where's the first place that parting is going to go? I'm sure you know the answer, but I'm still going to say it out loud anyways. First place a parting is going to go is to the third. Uh, a third will almost be started in a normal play. It will already be started if it is what is in the meta. Three hatch, and then a pool. So here's another important juncture. Parting would typically need to build a zealot right now. He would typically need to build a zealot, but because he moved here early and crossed off the bottom left, and then he moved up here quickly, sent his probe here to spot the overlord, and then retreated, also not seeing an expansion here, and then quickly got to here, it means that this gateway, as it finishes, doesn't have to build a zealot. It can actually build a cybernetic score. Now, here is the moment that people will get pissed off about in a coin flip situation, or uh, uh, I would say a claim to coin flippedness. They'll say, well, against a six pool, or even a 14 pool where he makes links, I have to get that zealot out fast. But if my opponent's going three hatch before pool, I want to get the cybernetics core out fast. It's not fair, it's coin flip, I gotta just guess, and, if you <laughs> and all that stuff. But parting's checked. Everything, it's very hard to find that timing, but you can find it. Very specific to this map. Ta-da, it's what it means to be a good player. So again, any time where you are feeling like there is a coin flip scenario, what you should then say to yourself, is that this is a chance for your brain to impress yourself, for you to delve really hard and really deep and to begin to look not at what the probe sees, but at the angles, what time, where is his overlords moving? Can you maybe intersect an overlord? If he drone scouts, how often is he three hatching and drone scouting? How often do players tend to 10 pool and drone scout? That sort of thing. This is a, a fantastic example. Another example that happened earlier, one of those coin flip potential moments, when we say to ourselves, oh my god, well, I went Nexus, and then I built the gate in my main base. Oh, it's going to be a coin flip. Well, you are banking on the fact that three hatches before pools are more likely, but you're hedging that bet again with this glorious building placement. So, farting, just doing a little bit of backwards scoutage. And we see kind of an impressively light amount of stuff. Cybernetics Core instantly gets Warp Gate. Very important rule, if you're getting a fast Cybernetics Core, please use it. Don't get this, and then, you know, build a Mothership Core, and wait a little bit, and build probes, and wait a little bit, and then wait a little bit, and then get a Stargate. You want to use that puppy fast. Pylon popping out. Love it. Love the pylons. Oh, what a great unit. Wait a minute. Players like uh, that we saw recently, um, Bling, he had two gateways. He had two gateways getting that early pair of sentries out. But Parting now has the freedom to do stuff like this. Build a forge hidden. A completely not revealed forge. He can hide whether or not he's getting an upgrade. He gets the ability to do this. Because, as we can see... When the hell would Bial have had any units to apply pressure? When would he have? Okay, well this is again where your brain can impress yourself. The gateway finishes, or excuse me, the spawning pool finishes. One queen, two queen, three queen. Ba -da 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 -dum, da -da 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 -dum, da 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 Here's the vomit. Blah! There haven't even been any larva 
in Jax that have fallen off? What units? What units could there possibly be that Parting would not be able to deal with? Moreover, in, uh, in about 40 seconds, there's going to be enough for a Photon Overcharge. Parting is opting to build Pylons, so he can keep building Probes, before electing to build Gateways, which are more necessary for defense. So here is a rather unusual move. Ground weapons, right away. We also see Parting uh, Chrono Boosting non-stop on his Probers. He's going to do another very standard move in a little bit. He's going to take himself some geysers. Okay, Zerg, yeah, you're getting your metabolic boost and all that good stuff. Right now, this is where we would traditionally say we're done with the metagame. This is the tiny wedge that I talked about at the start. Almost all, even very good players, will view strategies in this tiny-ass wedge. Here is the tiny ass wedge that most weaker Protoss players would look at Parting's build and describe it as. They'd say, okay, well Parting is, he's gonna go to base, and then he's gonna... And he managed to go Nexus and Gateway. Cool. That's it. Everything I just said, although true, is not as good of an analysis as it could be. Because again, we're saying, okay, consultation of the metagame is done. For the rest of the game, parting now must play along a straight track. Parting now has to um, just then get a robo and blink as he expands. And he's going to put on a little pressure and he's going to return home. And it's going to be very rote and dry and by the book. We see the normal line and people dip off and come right back, and then come right back. Watch this. Watch this gorgeousness. Typically, what a Zerg player is saying right now is, oh crap, he got a super early expansion. I see a forge. That's almost always a signal that he's taking another base, especially with three sentries out so early. Oh, there's we see the Nexus. About to be done and have an overcharge. Cool. Parting, getting his pylon down. Good stuff. Zerg scouted everything. I think Zerg in a moment is going to find this expansion. I think he's sending a Zergling there. Yeah, there he is. So what's a Zerg thinking right now? Zerg's thinking two things. Okay, you're getting plus one. You might be doing a two base all in. So I'm going to get Burrow. In the meantime, I'm getting... A bunch of drones. Because, dude, you're either going for that all-in or you're going for your third. And then BL sees this. What's typical right now? Well, what's typical right now is the Protoss player getting a Twilight Council. And then getting plus two and blink. And then pushing closer to the ten minute mark. Maybe a little after ten minutes with a couple of gateways with blink. What Parting does is he hides this gateway up here. I think he builds one more. He has his two gateways at the front. He has these two gateways here. I'm pretty sure he gets one more. He keeps building sentries. He keeps moving along and pushing back with the Mothership core. And now Parting is just going to go like seven gate without even using this expansion. Pretty dope, right? He's only mining from two bases. And we even see this Overseer. It can't have even gotten here earlier to have scouted. Because the layer is only just finished. That's when this attack begins. So we see indeed Burrow's done. But our tragic Zerg has gone all the way up to 70 drones. And now he's going to lose. Look at all the money. Oh, yeah. You know what's beneficial? We have three Nexuses, so we have all the Chrono Boost in the world. 
The third Nexus isn't just a dud. I will point out a couple things that are very important. For the Zerg player that powers very hard like BL, BL dies. If for some reason, Parting ran headlong into a Zerg player who actually did have enough roaches and units to kill this off. Well, no problem. Parting just chrono boosts and then rallies and he has three bases. And Zerg, who didn't power drones, still going to be very low uh, on economy when compared to Parting. Won't be in as good a situation, but... What a sexy play. And it's these little tiny assumptions that will bite you in the ass. The little assumption that I slipped right onto your table. Right in front of your face. Slipped it under the tip of your tongue. What did I just say? There's a little assumption that I snuck into your brain. I said, oh, Protoss is either going for a two base all in, or he's going to expand and power up. And it's these false either ors that metagame reliance um, can haunt you. Right? BL's is saying, oh yeah, well, it's just it's what everyone does, so they're cool. And Parting, so smart, did a very standard metagame exploit by going Nexus and then Gateway. Very standard, very normal. Everyone three hatches and pools. I'm just going to cut the forge and go for a Gateway with my Nexus. But then Parting does the extremely unusual and very fresh move of exploding out with an... 8 minute 30 second 7 gate timing push on 3 nexuses but only with a 2 base economy the 3rd nexus didn't even participate save for the chrono boost that was used on the gateways absolutely brilliant move and we're going to see parting do a lot more when we come back we'll see parting's very sexy zealot immortal all in that takes 18 minutes to conclude and then we will watch some parting games for Terran, so stay tuned.